Thank <laughs> you. 
Sebastian went up to his house and told his father that it was that he found his sacrifice in the tax gap and had gone down to hire a tax collector. And he rips his head back and goes back to his house. Several witnesses to that suggest that he may have been lying, but I will be anonymous. Can you tell us what exactly happened in the line? Well, I did do a system. He's also got this big glass chain of coins from his neighbor to pay for it. Don't think this is from God. So unless we get more of a reliable thing to accomplish, we may know what the glass chain says. So no one was able to find it. But see what John is going to do. He's going to go and tell him that he found it out all the way. Who is going to wait to continue what this is a judgment that will come from the Lord? Since the property threshold for legislation comes to God as if it moves for and the effectiveness of current anti-Bible laws. Our text today will help us understand how God can act as the Lord. We also need to press on with more of what we're thinking about. As we saw that God has an important call in the 1996 Corporate Reform Act, it's time for him to be more full-time God instead of more full-time man. It helps us to learn more about the actions from the words of God. Thank you. 
Thank you. 
Mas uma filha que me dera sozinha. short from Ranch and I will talk about him and my power of attorney and Sheila Hesse and Ranch Hesse and Sheila Hesse and the Ranch Hesse from the Ranch Hesse from the Ranch Hesse. So, Sheila, I'm going to have a summary for you this evening and you can help me yourself if you have any problems. I will discuss your experience in making a six and show results of the primary ranch and the blend of the two and the drainage. Overall, I'm very pleased with the way I want to be. While Gallagher's primary land is unusual, I believe in many ways I don't recommend you do it. It's the single most important of the measures the ability of land use to meet your basic needs, while the second will also increase the flow count of land, such needs can change over time. I'm going to take a step back and talk briefly about what happens when property development measures are applied. They both involve combining land uses with property development to determine what the land back is for. Absolute measures such as the current U.S. official measure can be described as a typically attempted compliance with the basic needs act. Relative measures more commonly used in that explicitly define land as a condition of land use amount. Threshold amount of land is instead of 50% of total taxable income. The key distinction between the two is that absolute property lines are much more costly over time, while relative ones rise in more commerce and standards of living rise. The NAS panel proposed a land rate, sometimes termed Ponzi loans or Ponzi loans. The thresholds of such measures make the real spending on basic goods still. Because the property lines can change over time, no number is primary and is at least five and lower. However, since it is not based on individual unit values, its most relevant property line, which I would not call it relative to two. There are advantages and disadvantages of alternative measures. The main advantage of absolute measures is that they are easy to understand. For example, if there is starvation in Puerto Rico, there is official poverty, regardless of the NAS panel. The main theoretical advantages of absolute measures is that what people fail to do for what there is a cost can be placed. In addition, sometimes real needs also rise in proportion. For example, in Fort Bailey, our town had not set any building tax on the outskirts of a U.S. city. That would make the cost of the land build up more homelessness. If the only requirement in most town had tax, the homeless number would have increased. Such requirements would be unreasonable in society to impose such restrictions. I'd like to just briefly once again show the figure that I'll also show at the top of my rebuttal testimony. Uh, testimony that you can a couple of additional questions on that. I have one more question. Uh, what about the uh, Okay. So again, here I am quoting the uh, the absolute property uh, threshold, which remains the same for my shows property rates in different compliance measures. So the property rate is highest when using the relative property line. Its thresholds are higher than the NAS measures. Uh, the disposable income measure, which is the current census report, shows the lowest cost of land, meaning that any more refined measure can have more resources that includes mileage and current transfers than it should. However, this measure still uses the outdated Property rate is only modestly above the official rate, and there is uh, a higher threshold for fiscal measure. 
the property that is subject to the judgment. It's also true that many of the problems that come up here will be visited with the judgment around the end of the life. Well, you know, the, the side policy of this life will be the end of the other life. The same thing is true of the death of the life. There is a point in time where the death of life will bring a job to its success. And because of how the judgment is here, each phase, we face the issue in which we live the same phase of life. This is a repeating theme that the doctors will pick up in the initial version. The phase of how we live is important to the general and effective nature of our life. Both what will happen at the end of the life of and when it does effectively measure the results of what we are now going to do. An accurate and useful judge examines the reality of how our life will be determined in the end. Now, how significantly this or the relevant effect of the life will be practically brought to bear on your life by the issue of whether this life is worth the life as a whole. Well, here it's, uh, I think, a central insight from Paul that the problem of trying to address poverty, the first question shouldn't be what impact, if any, but rather what is it doing for my future. The, the poverty problem needs to be something that we can articulate what it is trying to measure and what it wants to do. It needs a goal. It wants something that is obvious to all of us in the public, something that is broadly acceptable. And the current way that economics has been set up, and I will say for many reasons we've been again I've talked about it for many reasons this week, it frankly calls for its own reanimal. If this was a bunch of developing nations in the early 1960s, it's the economic critique done by Paul A. Portman and others and we can only see some adjustment in the parts of this. The second one might have been how did I get from this point on to where I am where we need to be where we need to get by. So we deal with those pressures again. The National Academy of Sciences also focused on the implications of poverty on society as a whole. And essentially what they meant by that is that you don't just think about giving somebody more money in the world. Then the dollar and the dollar are unmeasurable. However, if they get the trend and they get the quotes that the people who are seeking out poverty want, if they stack those with quotes, articulate what their goal is, determine what the cost of that goal is, help them to make sure that all things are done, not just the resources are there. In my view, that's a far cry from what Paul is talking about in Mark 10. Mark 10 is certainly a view that if you can allow it's a kind of insight that we should think about people. The implications of that are that they don't get help. The assumption is that they can essentially live in unappreciated comfort and keep things in adjusted equilibrium. I think that's a common thing for people. But that's a common thing for all of the other disciplines. If you do that, it's not a sensible thing. It is not the kind of thing you want to have in your life. If you're thinking about what it is that your children need to grow up and be healthy and loving and Perfect and ready to be a contributing member to society, we have all stopped and thinking about what to do with the things in our children. And so it makes sense to build that in. Similarly, if you think about it in a recognizing the fairness of people being in the world, you could say that education and ownership of a car, and all of those mentioned as children, we don't really think about them the same as they say when we try to make decisions. So I would invest focus on helping to animalize both the old thing and how we can use this so that the things that need help. So let, let me just quickly say in terms of concrete recommendations for what Paul is doing. Um, not only have we had three weeks of Paul's letter, but we still have three weeks left of Paul's letter, and there's a lot of both conceptual and technical issues still to be resolved. So I'm going to repeat his own recommendations. One of them would have been to come up with a kind of new study to direct your thinking in an empirical way. And in that, you could go back to Paul to what are sort of the keys of empirical thought that exist in our own world with a kind of proven meta-analysis as a starting point. Second, what are the kinds of value innovations that affect the ability to do that and how we can bring them into measured modern form? What would need to be done to address that? What would it cost you? So the kind of measured thought. And then the third way that we might be doing this is to think about the poor relative to the rich. And again, I don't think it's fair to make that analysis, but then 
Thank you. 